and chart. Uh, two types of questions are asked in university exam, and it will help you to relate uh, the various views on this diagram. So first of all, this network uh, network uh, it can be asked what are the scheduling techniques. So there are two scheduling technique. One is a critical path method, and second one is a network diagram or, or PERT program evaluation and review technique. So cri critical path method CRM we call normally which is abbreviated as CRM and second one is a PERT program evaluation and review technique. In both this technique uh, network diagram is very useful and we are using the network diagram. From network diagram explanation you can make uh, understandable you can understand how many paths can you have for execution of the project which path how many paths and how what is their time what is their timeline and which path is the longest path so longest path is the shortest path and you cannot afford a any delay on the longest path so that you get a lot of adjustment uh, regarding the timing of the activities regarding their sequence parallelism then regarding their schedule uh, resources regarding the resources you can execute the task so a lot of uh, things you can do this network through network diagram so let's see uh, uh, how to develop this network diagram. So what, so what are the steps we should take into consideration for developing the network diagram? The network diagram, it looks like this. So here the network diagram, we have considered a wedding network diagram. And these are various activities. Now, first activities. Calligrapher, this activity is finished to start, means address invitation will not get started unless until calli calligrapher, this activity is finished, right? So likewise, uh, parallelly to on start, you have the option of the two activity printing, uh, you have to decide printer or calligrapher, the next design invitation, print invitation. So when address, uh, address and print invitations, both things done on paper, then only you can send the invitation, right? So this is very simple. So what, so let's see what the steps we have to, we have followed in drawing this diagram. Very so it will establish your systematic approach. So first you have to identify and list the category of activities which are involved from start to the completion of the project. Then these activities you have to group in categories. Then array, then you have once you have formed the group, then what you need to do? Arrange the list of activities in sequential order of their performance. So you establish the sequential order of their performance. Then once you know their sequencing order, this is rough work you are doing. It is not directly you are keeping all activities, classes you are forming and all those things. Rough because you cannot on time you can think that put here as an activity, put next year activity, not like that. First you make a rough data. In rough data, you are organizing the activities in their sequential order, some, some of their ordering you are following and then then other independent activity also you are working out which are independent activities. So uh, you are getting uh, which can be started simultaneously. So these are two independent activities. Here two independent activities. This is one group and this is other group. Right. Then you are uh, then you are uh, considering uh, their 
which their sequence you are establish among once you group this activity then their sequence you are establishing so which activity is a starter activity from means flow of the data you are establishing like here this flow as it as intuitively what it is indicate this is done after this 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 start this is starting activity this now activity get executed or you can interpret this way this after this uh, activity this activity done right so naming convention on uh, on arrow show arrow the activity is being shown we are labeling arrow activity that arrow is a label which is indicating the name of the activity and what time it is started that here it is started here the timing is not mentioned but you can mention uh, we will see that detail what time it is ended so then if we are considering this thing in terms of the time that is start time and end time then you can then it will be understood or it will be related to event whereas activity with we uh, when i say that event means event will have particular start time and particular end time during that event what work, what work is being done that is the task that is the activity that is the name of the activity so that name so what is the difference between activity and event yes anyone can tell me in this meaning this is this related or information if i given to you what can you pick up hello can anyone tell me what do you understand what is the difference between event and activity hello guys are you are you there hello are you there guys jeshran let me check riya riya Yeah, yeah. I want to hear you. Who is there active? हार्दिक प्रजापति अरे यार you means online he didn't mean that you should not reply <laughs> ran Now how can I check who is there? Atharva.
Alo. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Who said yes? Nisha. Nisha Save. Yes, sir. But you are only saying, but what about all these other one? This. Uh, because now I have, I have get doubt whether are you there or just for namesake you log in. If name the moment I come to know that for names if you are logging, then what interest I will have? Harshwardhan. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, some are there, but it's not good. Uh, you all should reply. And you should not uh, misutilize uh, uh, purpose or techno technology should be used for right thing. If you are doing that way, then we will uh, we will be, uh, come to the offline mode. So please be attentive and. Go on, be interactive. Yes. Sir. If audibility is issue or some other issues, you let me know. Anyway, the flow, the flow completely get uh, disturbed because of this. So there are two ways of the for uh, two types of the network diagram we can have. So the one is arrow diagram method and other one is a precedence diagram method. So in arrow diagram method means activity on arrow. Arrow is labeled by activity. So tail of the arrow represents the start of the activity and head represents the finish of the activity. Length of the activity normally denotes the duration of the activity. And each arrow connects between two nodes. So sometimes this arrow, through arrow we can indicate a dummy activity also. So what is a dummy activity? Dummy activity means which did not consume any time. So in dummy activity, there are two parallel activities and simultaneously completing. So through creation of the dummy activity, we can we can bring these two, two different flow in one point. So that's that is the necessity of the dummy activity. And dummy activity you are by including dummy activity, you will get a clarity of the flow. So dummy activity means it consume. It is the it is just for convenient purpose that dummy activity is created, which in order to have the flow in the network. Nothing more than that. Right, and then other other uh, type of the network diagram is a precedence diagram method. So we are creating here where each box, each node represent an activity with the arrow representing relationship between the different activities. And this arrow can represent four types of the relationship. What is the four types of the relationship we have seen? We have seen finish to start, start to start. Hello? Can anyone tell other, other two types? Hello guys. Can other one tell me what are the other two types? Finish to finish, start to finish. So start to finish is very uncommon. It is 
then one activity cannot finish until another activity start that is the meaning no this is very rare one activity cannot finish start to finish when another activity starts until another activity starts can you give me example one activity cannot finish until another activity starts very very rarely this this type of the dependency relationship we are using hello hello guys you are there if i am not enjoying lecture if you are if you can do on your own this is okay because our ultimate aim is to learn if learning on your own because not that much difficult this subject where numerical things are there that thing i i want to stress more but you should be responsive then only i will enjoy taking the lecture or you don't want this portion ran yes sir see teaching cannot be forcibly we are teaching if you are in listening mood if you are taking or if you are interacting definitely it will be useful if the no interaction you don't have you are you are you feel that you can do on your own by reading i yeah. because i believe the software engineering where the software engineering when these people have already gone through this course and some more repetitions they may come across but for others then it will be problem no yes sir that's correct hello let me know your views so let's see so in this uh, active activity as per as activity is concerned we have predecessor activity successor activity and concurrent activities and dummy activities so four types of the activities uh, knowledge we require now dummy, uh, dummy activity i told it is uh, required it is shown by the dotted line uh i will uh, later on i will give you example how the dummy activity is uh, considered and dummy activity uh, when two parallel activities in project have same starting and finishing points then you can include dummy activity in between that so dummy activity is for just uh, to maintain the structure of the diagram right then we have the event now the uh, event means start event finish event it means starting point finishing point the the, the event uh, we have various kinds of the event uh, where where the merging where the event merging will occur where merging and bursting of the event will occur where some event will burst so what do you understand by this merging merging is uh, very simple where where the two different event uh, we are joining into one activity two different activity we are merging we are joining that that is a merging so what is the bursting burst means more than one activity are coming out from one single node that is a bursting then we may have mer merging and bursting where many various events are merging and from that one one more activity is coming out or uh, not one many coming and many going at a single point so that can also be the so that relationship of the or that feature of the uh, event we, we are calling as merge and burst so these are various kinds of the activity events you can think 
right so ultimately what are the advantage you are getting on the network diagram you to network means indirectly to network analysis you are getting a success a sequence of the activities when you are working out for the network diagram the sequence of the activities knowledge is already you are possessing or indirectly is coming to you you are knowing the critical path what are the critical paths there then you are knowing the project durations then you are knowing okay is there any flexibility you can have in a schedule so you can you are you, you are exploring that flexibility so you can have, you can have a lot of mathematical calculation to establish early start uh, early finish late start late finish for each activity so these mathematical calculations will give you how much flexibility you may have in the project right then you have you can have some scheduling model you can do once the scheduling model is decided then you can do the analysis schedule analysis so schedule analysis means uh, like what if uh, kind of uh, analysis if this not done that, then what will happen or if this get failure then what other things can you work out like that kind of the scheduling activity you can have scenario analysis uh, schedule compression techniques you can apply so these are the various uh, network related analysis you can have right yes any difficulty what are the advantage you are getting out of this network activity rayan sequence of the activities like which should be you are not responding also all are in here i am teaching a dummy activity and you are also becoming a dummy hello yes sir we are there sir hello yes sir we can hear you we are saying hello hello yes sir now let's see some time related analysis what what kind of time related analysis we can have so we can have two types of uh, time related analysis uh this two type means what what is the earliest event what is the earliest this event will get finished and this, this earliest event calculation is starting from the forward 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 way let me hold forward way Uh, it is better if I I explain this concept with uh, some diagram. Hello guys, you are there. If you are there, then I will explain. Otherwise, if, uh, I will explain in offline class then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because uh, I didn't understand you are getting or not getting timing related things. So timing related of uh, earliest event time and latest time. So we have to for earliest event time we have to calculate from start and for latest event time we have to come backward. Means forward forward direction calculation we have done backward direction from backward. If this work is the, uh, getting done in this let's say hundred days. So earlier work, let's say 90 days. So earliest finish time, 
that way we are calculated and we are coming to start point so formula for forward estimation is uh, addition we are add, we are add, uh, adding the activity in, in backward we are uh, considering the it's better to uh, if i show you through uh, example rather than speaking so these two example i will take in class forward direct forward direction method and backward direction method right okay sir Does this require calculation without calculations? I don't think you will understand. And now I cannot make out how many of you are really listening or just names if you are there. So two, two, this, two, this two example I will take in class. This is the portion I should. I feel that I should take offline. Now we will see one, uh, one important aspect uh, uh, of this uh, project scheduling, which is also in planning stage. Uh, that is a resource allocation. How to decide resources in a project? So project resource is totally dependent on budgeting. So this is altogether separate. Even if you are listening, it will be clear. We will go on next set. Any questions you would like to ask project scheduling? Hello? No, sir. It's clear. We'll start next topic. Yes, sir. Any questions you have? If you are there, then definitely questions will be otherwise. No, Hello. sir, it is clear. Request to follow. Hello. Yes, sir, no doubts. It is clear. You can concurrently you can plan these resources. Now, uh, as I told, for other resources, uh, you can consider equipment, office space, computer hardware, software, and if it is other 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 than this, then construction related material. If it is a construction related project, right? So there's the uh, then how how this uh, relationship uh, in scheduling helps to plan the resources. So we, before scheduling, we do a work breakdown structure. And work breakdown structure part is considered in scheduling. Because when we are doing a work breakdown structure, ultimately the scheduling is, uh, ultimately the relationship is understood. And out of that relationship, we can understand at what, uh, what time, what resources we will be requiring, right? Now the important uh, uh, technique which we will be missing in other uh, other our traditional activity is a uh, estimation. We somehow only apply one technique that is the expert judgment technique, not other technique. But in here, here we have to estimate before asking someone for resource. We have to estimate. So these all method what we are going to cover these are estimation related. 
so estimation can be how based on expert judgment estimation can be based on alternative analysis publish uh, or already available data uh, then there is estimate uh, we may do estimation based on uh, by using a top down approach or bottom up approach so these are some of the techniques we are using can anyone tell me these techniques uh, we have seen somewhere in software engineering if you are uh, division a b student computer student hello so in bottom up uh, we see the like low level every task estimate and then yeah, yeah, uh, we that, combine the concept is okay but where where we have seen this technique in software engineering expert judgment and this uh, uh, kokomo you, you remember kokomo model yes sir kokomo 1 kokomo 2 yes sir so the, what was this this were estimation technique only there we were estimating Correct. then there was ex like a all of this technique expert judgment all right uh, so yes. this, but what is the difference between this technique this is a cost cost related technique and other cost related technique that we already seen if you remember before selection of the project we are evaluating we are evaluating what is the overall whether that project is feasible or not from feasibly from feasible perspective we have seen some costing of the project do you right there also costing method we applied here also costing we are applying but their costing approach was different where we were that was for selection of the project so selection of the project was based on whether the net present value of the project is getting more or not what is the net return on the project you are getting then how many how many days it takes to recover third method that is a that is a break even analysis break even how many days it takes to recover your money what you are spending then if this project is continued what is the accounting rate you are going to receive means how much interest account how much return over the period you will, you will be receiving so these were for selection project selection not for project costing project now uh, on that basis we have selected that project now here once the project is selected we are estimating its cost because cost is a guiding point for or to understand Uh, to take consideration what are the limitations in execution of this project in line to this limitation your resource requirement should be if your resource requirement is different then this uh, uh, then you are not line with the reality that is the meaning so estimation so expert judgment now it is your expertise it is your expertise how do you uh, how do you understand the things so there is no mathematical formula here if you executed more project your your judgment will be better one now alternative analysis method you can uh, under this under this kokomo and all mathematical based method you can include where uh, Effort is given by a into size raised to power b. If you remember, effort is given by a into size raised to power b, and that was coming a where a what was a a was one constant size and m was one constant. size you are getting the size of the project in terms of the kilo lines of the code all right 
all here in the all is a and m all the factors related to uh, company and all variable factors you can incorporate so that was given by some constant uh, a b c d if you remember right those software engineering student can remember but i don't know mechanical engineering if uh, can be able to relate or not if they are not able to understand then i will explain them separately a research student also should uh, relate uh, because that uh, that uh, they already gone through software engineering uh, and their effort estimation was based on this equation so this is alternative method now let's come to uh, bottom of uh, the approach the bottom of approach and top down uh, top down approach so what is the characteristics of the bottom up approach where in bottom up approach we are going to perform the work take what is the work is actually at work level is at very ground level the work quantity we are we are considering so here we can have the relationship among the employee vendors and other team members you can assess because they are directly related to the ground level and then overall value is from moving from very basic level work and adding this the overall value is calculated so here the small uh, work is uh, basically broken down into smaller components the duration is estimated cost is estimated and the smaller component we uh, for each small small component the total if we add then it will give a total of that uh, design so this way our bottom up approach work so in bottom up estimation when should we go for bottom up estimation is can anyone tell me we should not go for this bottom up approach if if the project requires a long planning and the project which have very contract very limited resources then in that case the bottom up approach we should not go because bottom up approach is no way uh, considering the tight constraint of the budget the opposite of this is a top down approach so top down approach the overall project is estimated first the individual task are uh, appropriate uh, individual task are understood from this overall project so you are starting from the top of the pyramid and working downwards pyramid is there top of the pyramid is started and working downward so this uh, this technique can be very advantageous when the uh, when you need a cost estimation in early stage of the project in the early stage of the project it is recommended that you should not go in very much detail right so 
what we can say that if this technique is based on high level information the process of costing can be faster and it can with fewer resources and effort you can do the costing it is a less expensive quick method for establishing the project budget whereas in bottom up you require detailed information where you will be requiring more time and resources and one of the very prominent advantage of these uh, top down approach is that you are getting a commit uh, you can have the commitment for the project from the upper level management because the upper level management they have given this much budget within this budget uh, whatever things you want to do this this should be in line to this budget budget is given so top down estimation is recommended when you are at very initial stage or very quick way you want to see how much allo how much allocation for each and every task you can have then bottom of then top down estimation is uh, recommended in uh, top down also you can have uh, other sub sub method like uh, uh, ratio methods you can use consensus method or uh, other kind of apportions methods you can use right so this actually this technique is only will be very relevant if you are practically using it i have i told you just the overall idea when should you you do bottom up or when should you go for top down this, this is one of the problem solving technique also the next issue is the resource leveling if you see uh, effort estimation gives a number of number of persons month this one person one person one day work is considered as a one one person day right so at at any particular day how many persons you will be requiring so that all should get engaged in the work you will have to do certain kind of the leveling and so what are the concurrent activities can you do simultaneously so this kind of the issues if concurrent activity you cannot in concurrent activities you cannot engage all people then is better to delay their deployment so from that perspective the resource leveling means at what date how many persons effort you will require total person days will be same but this is not at one day it is not like that if 100 person day 100 days work for one person this 100 days is going to work and 100 people you if you deployed for one day then in one day the work should get completed but it is the but relationship is not like that so that way resource leveling you need to do so this resource leveling will help you in hr planning then in hr you can give a better idea how many skill motivated and what are different competency people you will be requiring 
person day i already explain you what is the uh, what is this matrix one person for one day is a person day one person for one month is a person month and one day work is equivalent to six to eight hours depending on various norms so here i have put this thing in the red mark one person for 10 days in place of 10 per 10 people for one day so which which is easier to manage one person for 10 days is easier to manage rather than 10 people for one day because more people are coming the management becomes a challenging one so installing 10 does uh, 10 new pcs on desktop Configuring servers with each PC, creating a new com a new computer, oh, building the forms. So this become a very challenging one. If more persons, if you deploy, then various roles you have to think. Uh, while well resource while well resource planning, you have to think about various roles. Who will be project manager? Who will be developer? Who will be subject matter expert? Who will be team member? Who will be representative of the client? These uh, these various roles also will help you, uh, will help you un uh, to understand at what time which role you will be requiring. <laughs> then uh, HR related uh, something you have to take into consideration. What is the what is HR culture? What is the collaborative uh, agreement? HR supported things are there. What are the employment laws, wage, wage laws, holidays? Because these all will impact indirectly to your project. I am not going in that much detail for this because these are uh, simply just point I am covering. Then uh, how the performance of the employee is noted, how their performance related to job work behavior this this you will record now are there any reward for the employee who are working the reward will motivate so many organizations supports uh, get together kind of things if the work uh, or they continue they, Continuously arrange this kind of the events where the all members are get involved to, a, to build a team. Team. So these are some psychology. Uh, from, uh, these are HR related points. Psychologically, things are there. Is their esteem is uh, being uh, honored? Self actualization is there or not? We will not go in detail of this organization related. Uh, then personality types. While selecting the persons, uh, what is the sensing attitude, thinking attitude, judging and perceiving. Uh, the lot of theory is there. Uh, typically, uh, various sixteen personality types you can you can find out. The HR people are expert in this because you give requirement or if you have certain uh, knowledge about this thing, then uh, according to this personality type, the people selection you can have. Then leadership, uh, who will be leader? Uh, leadership, what are the qualities of leader before selecting? You make sure uh, should be purchased by the person. If the, if intuitive meaning of the because a lot of people have done a lot of work on this leadership and they come up with the definition of leadership. So this definition will help you. Are these qualities are supported by leader or not? So leaders are either uh, if they are autocratic or democratic, are they pathfinder or visionaries? Are they problem solvers? Are they team oriented? Then scheduling, you, you will require certain negotiation techniques. Uh, sorry, not in scheduling, resource planning. 
because these are all resources what you are intending what you are expecting will you will get easily no you will do some negotiations and this negotiation some supporting data you must have so that way the negotiation helps you then there will be uh, various conflict in negotiation or conflict will be you know in overall always you will come across some kind of the conflict while executing your project so conflict is not a bad thing if it is healthy because this different conflict is a difference of opinion which will give which will bring the more clarity on the approach of the work right so conflict should be there but it should be a healthy it should be for good cause not for just a politi politi politics oriented now there are conflict resolution or precautions as far as possible don't bring the conflicts avoiding forcing collaborating compromising accommodating these are some of the styles from the name itself you can make out what is the intended meaning of these styles then you uh, you can add up certain delegations while planning the resources you have to identify and clearly assign the work to others you have to make them their ex other people expectations very clear their performance you have to recognize so these are the things going to happen in resource management planning so some of the most of the things are theory oriented except cost test project cost estimation techniques and i believe all you can i you all you will be able if i share this material to you so for mechanical student if they are interested i will take it separately in detail pro project cost estimation for computer student they are also welcome but it will be repetition of the software engineering method which we have covered kokomo 1 and kokomo 2 or boehm's cost estimation models So any questions do you have no sir so we today we covered uh, somewhat we have taken speed and not go into that much detail because most of the things was theory oriented so we we'll stop here with we'll you are be today and your response is also not was good on the online mode so we we'll stop here today Okay. okay. Uh, Ren, you take attendance and um, WhatsApp me. Uh, mechanical. Yes, uh, yeah. Who are the mechanical students by the way here? Hello. All our all our computer students and ECS mechanical and ECS ECS also going to do software engineering. Yeah, yes, sir. Mechanical engineering. And these are all. Yeah, other I have not checked your um, comment. 